Hello, 大家好。今天是广交会。This is the first day of the second phase of the Canton Fair. Let me share with you the situation. From the perspective of customer base, it's the same as the first session. There are very few customers from Europe and the United States. We have not received a single business card from American customers in a day. Unexpectedly, there are more Latin American customers than last year. You see, blonde people. 90% are Russians, and the rest are Africans, as well as people from Eastern European countries like Bulgaria and Romania. However, the order volume of these customers is very small, and they do not have the purchasing power of previous European and American customers. So it's a big challenge for us. I have also heard that some equipment factories have received a lot of orders, but this is also a phenomenon of product transfer. Customers from various countries come to buy Chinese equipment and then produce in their own countries. What about products produced in China? The annual Canton Fair is in progress. A friend sent me news that the largest number of customers returning to the Canton Fair this time are from the Middle East, followed by customers from Russia and Southeast Asia. And relatively few customers from Europe and the United States. Although China has significantly relaxed restrictions this time. As long as you are a customer visiting the exhibition and have booked a round-trip air ticket, you can go to the exhibition without a visa. In the past, when overseas customers wanted to come to China to see exhibitions, the procedures were very troublesome. Judging from the policies of the Chinese government, it's currently increasing its efforts to promote the export of Chinese products abroad. However, from the woman's description, we can see that the Chinese government's relaxation of restrictions has had little effect, and the number of customers from Europe and America has not increased significantly. Let me tell you the real situation of this year's Canton Festival. I just came out of a machinery factory in Qingdao. The boss flew back to Qingdao from Guangzhou this morning. I asked him why he left early, even though there's two days left in the show. The boss had a lot of complaints. First of all, there are obviously more foreigners this year, but most of them are from the Belt and Road countries. There are more customers from Russia, the Middle East, and Central Asian countries. There are still not as many high-end buyers from Europe and the United States. Secondly, customers visiting the exhibition now use Alibaba International Station or other platforms to compare prices. The China Import and Export Fair, also known as the Canton Fair, is China's largest and most renowned trade fair. It is held in three phases, from April 15th to May 5th in Guangzhou this year. The Canton Fair is considered a barometer of China's exports, with its export turnover once occupying a dominant position in China's exports. In recent days, Chinese state media has praised the Canton Fair, with nearly 30,000 exhibitors participating. Chinese Premier Li Qiang also visited the fair's enterprise hall. Emphasizing the importance of implementing Xi Jinping's important instructions on running the Canton Fair, deepening reform and opening up, adhering to innovative development, and promoting the Canton Fair to be better and better, allowing this golden signboard to continuously shine with new era charm, and so on. However, in a video uploaded by netizens from the fair, a Chinese exhibitor complained that there were no customers, leading to substantial losses. Did you see the deserted booth? No one, no one, lose, lose to the point where nothing is left. According to Radio Free Asia, some exhibitors at the Canton Fair are continuously complaining that they have spent hundreds of thousands of yuan to participate, but have not seen any foreign buyers coming to inspect their goods. One exhibitor lamented, "It's not worth it. One booth costs over 100,000 yuan, and there are no people." Another Chinese exhibitor said, "I believe 2024." Is the most difficult year for all enterprises engaged in foreign trade, shuttling between global exhibitions every day. But the higher the hope, the greater the disappointment. Either you can't get customers, or you get customer orders, but the profit is so low that you can't make money. Those booths are useless. What should we do in 2024? Furthermore, some Chinese exhibitors complained that commodity prices are as cheap as cabbage, and the market is bleak. According to Reuters, Wu Jianhua is a partner at Foshan Top Winning Import and Export, a company that produces electrical products in Foshan City. He is one of the many exporters worried about business prospects at China's largest trade exhibition held in Guangzhou. Wu Jianhua said that his factory used to accept orders when the order quantity reached a certain level to manage production effectively. Now, in such a grim economic situation, the factory is willing to accept any order. At the Canton Fair, his factory's profit margin had dropped from about two percent three or four years ago to a meager zero point five percent. He is concerned about the business. Wu Jianhua also said. 
The electrical appliances we sell are as cheap as cabbage. If the situation continues for another year or two, we will have to change careers. Some participants at the fair said that business feels sluggish. Lois Zhang, sales manager at Engping Shuangyi Electronics Industry Company Limited, which produces speakers and microphones, said, "Last year, on the first day of the Canton Fair, I received more than ten inquiries, but today I only received three business cards." The manager of an outdoor heater manufacturer in Jiangsu Province said that he is not very hopeful about the European and North American markets, as most of his customers are concentrated in these markets. Chris Lin, who frequently attends the Canton Fair and owns a lighting product factory in Eastern Province, spent tens of thousands of renting a booth this year, but he did not have high expectations for the fair. Lin said, "In recent years, there have been fewer and fewer European and American buyers coming to inspect our products. In the past, a large Western supermarket buyer would send five to eight people over, all dressed in nice suits. In recent years, I have only seen one or two, and they look around casually." Another exhibitor, Mr. Fan, said, "This year, the orders from one of our major customers have decreased by 25 percent compared to last year, and other customers have not decided whether to continue placing orders. Also, my customers are still reducing their inventories. I hope that later this year, customer orders will increase." Exhibitors at the Canton Fair are complaining that the results of their participation are not very good. For example, at the recent Hong Kong Lighting Fair, several exhibitors said that there are no people, and they could not even get a few business cards in a day. Similarly, at the Canton Fair, although there were many foreigners, there were few inquiries. Chen Zhu, a finance professor at the University of Hong Kong's business school, said that the key word for this year's Canton Fair is low price. Due to significantly lower domestic demand for goods in China and severe overcapacity in most industries, manufacturers must lower prices to increase exports. Some financial scholars believe that the poor performance of this year's Canton Fair is partly due to China's overcapacity. This corroborates the opinion of U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen that China's overcapacity is causing a huge disaster for the world. The scene at the Canton Fair has sounded the alarm for China's overcapacity. China needs to adjust its industrial structure and stop its expansionary trade policies, according to Radio Free Asia. Senior financial commentator Tsai Shen-kun said that due to the impact of the overall environment and rising production costs in China, the profits of exported goods from China are decreasing. International market competition is driving prices lower and lower, coupled with exchange rate changes, making export trade more and more difficult. Now companies rely on exports, and they can still have some sales. Many domestic companies' products are not selling at all and cannot survive. Chai Shen Kun believes that as China's economy continues to decline, the situation for exported goods will worsen, especially with Western countries such as the United States increasing tariffs on Chinese goods, thereby suppressing China's excess capacity output. On top of poor attendance, the weather is also not cooperating. During the closing period of the first phase of the Canton Fair, Guangdong experienced continuous heavy rainfall, with rainfall in some areas exceeding historical extremes for April. As a result, transportation in the South China region by land, sea, and air has been severely affected. Many domestic and foreign exhibitors and buyers have been unable to leave Guangzhou due to flight cancellations or delays. The previous Canton Fair, held in October last year, signed deals worth about 22.3 billion U.S. dollars, an increase of 2.8 percent from the April 2023 fair. The April 2023 fair was the first one after three years of the pandemic. However, this is still far below the pre-pandemic turnover of about 30 billion U.S. dollars. With China's economy struggling to recover after the pandemic and the real estate market in a slump, the Chinese government has been focusing on new industries such as electric vehicles, batteries, and renewable energy, attempting to find new sources of growth for the slowing economy. The Chinese government and state media have frequently boasted about the export performance of its three new items: electric vehicles, solar panels, and lithium batteries, which have exceeded one trillion yuan. However, Goldman Sachs analysis in 2023 found that the new three items only account for about 3.5 percent of China's GDP and cannot create enough job opportunities for millions of struggling college graduates and migrant workers. Meanwhile, China's plans to export the three new items abroad have also encountered many problems and may even trigger a trade war. CNBC reported that Beijing's emphasis on manufacturing has raised concerns about overcapacity. The goods produced in China far exceed the absorption capacity of the United States or other countries, which may lead to a price war. Jens Eskeland, 
chairman of the European Union Chamber of Commerce in China and Beijing, said that the chamber has found comprehensive overcapacity in chemicals, metals, and electric vehicles, among other areas. He said almost every company he's spoken to is facing this issue. The surplus capacity will have an impact on the market in the years ahead. Furthermore, due to issues such as slowing sales and insufficient transportation capacity, many Chinese electric vehicle manufacturers have stacked vehicles at European ports, turning them into parking lots. Many vehicles unloaded from ships remain at the ports until they are sold to distributors or customers. The slow sales of Chinese electric vehicles in Europe are the main reason for congestion at the ports. Some Chinese electric vehicles have been parked at European ports for up to 18 months. The EU has launched multiple investigations into whether Chinese manufacturers are dumping electric vehicles and other subsidized goods in its markets. U.S. Trade Representative Catherine Tai told lawmakers at an April 16th congressional hearing that the Biden administration is seriously considering various trade defense tools against threats posed by China's trade and economic policies, including reviewing tariffs imposed on Chinese imports during the Trump era. Tai also said she is reviewing a petition submitted by five U.S. unions requesting a new Section 301 investigation into unfair practices, policies, and actions in China's maritime logistics and shipbuilding industries. Former President Donald Trump used Section 301 of the Trade Act of 1974 to impose tariffs on Chinese imports worth billions of dollars in 2018. Earlier, U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen warned Chinese leaders during her visit to China that China's excessive investment in electric vehicles, solar panels, and other clean energy materials has led to a wave of unacceptable export surges, hurting manufacturers in the United States and elsewhere. CNN reported that Yellen said that the United States does not rule out any measures against Chinese overcapacity, including possible tariffs aimed at preventing a large number of cheap Chinese goods from flooding the U.S. market. Yellen said, We're concerned about the possibility of surges in Chinese exports to our markets in areas where they have a great deal of overcapacity. I've been very clear in my discussions with them that this is a concern not only to us, but to other countries, to Europe, to Japan, and even to emerging markets, India, Mexico, Brazil. Yellen also mentioned that the Chinese government's massive subsidies have led to China flooding the global market with steel and aluminum below cost, devastating industries around the world and the United States. According to AFP, steel mill owners and workers in countries such as Chile and Brazil are pressuring their governments to raise import tariffs as hundreds of thousands of jobs in the industry are threatened by the influx of cheap Chinese steel. The Economic Commission for Latin America and the Caribbean reported in 2022 that China accounts for 54 percent of global steel production, followed by India at 66 percent. Major steel-producing countries in Latin America, including Brazil, Mexico, Argentina, and Colombia, collectively account for 3.1 percent. Data from the Latin American Steel Association, Alacero, shows that in 2023, the region imported a record 10 million tons of steel from China, a 44 percent increase year-on-year. Year. Twenty years ago, this number was only 85,000 tons. About 1.4 million people in Latin America are employed in the steel industry, but due to Chinese steel prices being 40% lower than locally produced prices, local steel plants are being impacted and workers' livelihoods are increasingly threatened. Chile's largest steel plant, Huachipato, is one of the victims. The factory has announced its closure, affecting about 2,700 direct jobs and 20,000 indirect jobs. Carlos Ramirez, a 56-year-old worker, said that the impact of closing Huachipato is like an atomic bomb explosion for the region. In a last-ditch effort, Huachipato has requested Chile's Commission for the Defense of Free Competition, CNDP, to recommend to the government a 25% tariff on imported steel. The CNDP recently ruled that there is sufficient evidence to support the existence of dumping by China and exporting steel prices at below cost and recommended a 15% tariff. However, Chile signed a free trade agreement with China in 2006, and if it chooses to combat dumping and protect its domestic steel industry, it will face punitive measures. Brazil faces a similar situation. According to data from the Brazilian Steel Association, Brazil's imports of steel from China increased by 50% last year, while its own steel production decreased by 6.5%. One of Brazil's largest steel producers, Jurdao, has laid off 700 workers. The company stated that the layoffs were due to the challenge by predatory imports of Chinese steel. The Brazilian steel industry has also made a similar appeal as Chile, calling on the government to increase import tariffs to 25 percent, with specific rates varying by product. 
Alejandro Wagner, CEO of Alasaro, said, No one is against trade between nations, but it must be fair trade. To address the surge in cheap products caused by Chinese subsidies and overproduction, Mexico and the United States have previously imposed tariffs on Chinese products. In addition to imposing tariffs, the U.S. government has in recent years restored partial duty-free imports of EU steel and aluminum products and strengthened enforcement mechanisms in an effort to reduce the impact of Chinese steel dumping on the industry. Thank you.